Hi, I am Marcos Ferro, and today I will give you some ideas on how to work with the motion blur technique. Motion blur makes your images more dynamic and adds a feeling of speed. We are going to demonstrate some techniques which can be good additions or creative approaches for any sport photography shoot. To find the right location is essential and a very important aspect is the background. Try to avoid clean or completely plain areas like the blue sky. The reason for that is simple. To show blur you need texture. With this in mind, we did the shoot in the woods where we found plenty of opportunities to experiment. For the first shot, I set a couple of flashes to freeze just the rider. I had to ensure that the action was taking place in a shady area because every part of the rider hit by natural light would also be blurred, which we don't want. I set my camera to a slow shutter speed of 1 50th of a second and continuous focus mode. When the rider came into the turn, I focused and followed him with the camera until the right moment to trigger. The result turned out well, and we reached our goal of creating a dynamic action shot. Another effect you can create is radial blur. Use the same camera settings as before, but with a zoom lens, and pull their zoom ring while you trigger. This effect gives the impression that the rider is coming right at you. Even if the rider is not moving, you can use the same technique, but the results sometimes seem unnatural, as you can see in this sample. The classic way of panning is to follow a linear action with your telelens and this is used a lot in motor sports photography. Again, I use continuous focus and slow shutter. The better you synchronize your panning with the action, the clearer and better results you will have. Adding some strokes to this classic technique can help to create even more complex images. Like you can see in this sample, I also hit some of the trees with my lights to freeze them. The trees now appear as obstacles and not just part of the blurry surrounding. Finally, we mounted a remote camera on the bike to get even closer into the action. Since the track was relatively smooth to ride, I was able to slow down my shutter speed to 1 20th of a second. I used a fisheye to get as much of the rider and background in the frame. I decided to focus manually because the rider wouldn't change his position too much. Again, it was crucial to get a contrasting background for a more interesting outcome. Although this is a well-known technique, I hope I could share some tips that will help you in the future.